All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. <laughs> Can you dig it? All right, guys, check it out. This video, well, video series is very, very, guys, it is, I can't express how much, how important it is for you to keep track of this video, especially if you're a mobile mechanic out there and you decide on stepping up from a van or a car up to a full-size truck, all right? This is a 93 Ford F700, and what we're going to be doing is show you how to replace the rear, actually rebuild, place and rebuild the rear wheel cylinders. There's two. All right, enough of that. Coming up on Astro Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, right now I'm up into the vehicle. I'm gonna grab the camera and show you why we're replacing what we're replacing. Okay, as we get up under the vehicle, look right there you see how wet that is that's brake fluid leaking out of there so we got to take that off see what's going on and get this fixed all right we'll be right back all right guys first things first this this job doing this job uh, it is so important for you to follow these instructions in this video doing the brakes on these trucks is completely different than doing them, on, doing them on cars, and there's a bigger risk factor. What I mean by that is on a car, you lose brakes, you might run into another car, everything is cool, you might run into a pole or something, and hopefully, luckily, you don't hurt somebody. But if you're in one of these vehicles and you lose your brakes, you're killing somebody. These things do not stop. There is nothing that can stop them, especially when they start building up momentum. So you got to pay attention, and especially um, working on these, getting up under these trucks, Guys, if you're getting up under these trucks with no wheels on the car, bypass the jack stand. This thing is a, this is a whole new level of repairing vehicles. That's why it costs so much to fix these. All right, the compressor we're going to be using. You say, why is he telling me about the compressor? Because I want to. <laughs> this is the Husky 175 gallon that Civi got me for my 175 psi. She could don't crack. She she low corrected me. So 30 <laughs> <laughs> all right check it out she got me that for bur my birthday got rid of the other one check out the video I'm not gonna put a link in the description below just go back on our previous videos and you'll see it all right again pay very close attention to this video especially if you plan on getting one of these trucks to do a mobile uh, repair these things are great all right we'll be right back all right guys first things first Go to Harbor Freight and get you a set of wheel chucks. Now you're gonna wheel chocks. Now you're gonna have an option of two of them: the smaller ones, which is cheaper, or these bigger ones, which is a little bit more expensive. But you definitely need something like these. You do not need nothing that this wheel or this vehicle will roll over, because these things can roll over curbs and everything. Now, a lot of times people will tell you, "Okay, you're gonna jack it up, chuck up one, chuck the wheel right there." And you're good to go. No, you do not do that. You get two. You chalk up the front and the back because you have no idea if this thing starts to roll, um, which way this vehicle, which way it's going to start rolling. So you make sure you chalk up both. And guys, if you want, get 40s. Put them on each tire. But we're going to put them right there, and everything is locked into place. All right. Let's move on to the next step. We'll be right back. All right, guys, next is jacking this vehicle up. This, no, 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 you cannot go ahead and use your regular floor jacks on this unless you got one rated to pick something like this up. But I definitely recommend getting you a bottle jack and get no, no, no 10 ton or the minimum, guys. You want to get you a 20 ton. This is from Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh Heavy Duty, 20, 20 ton bottle jack. And I like this one. This was a low profile. You see how short it is because sometimes getting up under the rears of these is very difficult. So you definitely want to need something like that. And it's definitely 
Because you pick this truck up with this, this jack is going into the ground. There's no question about it. It's going into the ground, even though it has a flat base. So you're going to need to give it another base. Now, preferably, you want to use something like a 2x6 or 2x8. If you can fit this up under there with this and still have the height, that is great. If not, you want to get you a 3 quarter inch plywood, not particle board. Do not use particle board because particle board will shatter. When you put this way up there, it will shatter. So you definitely want to use uh, plywood. Also, do not use brick. Brick breaks easily. You see these bricks over here? People are like, yeah, the brick will work as well. But a brick will break. Under certain weight, it will break. Then the truck's coming down and killing you. There's no it coming down on you and you might be okay. This kind of weight will kill you. A car, you might, especially with the cars these days, a car you can get up under it. You can actually push it off you and get from under the vehicle. But you ain't doing that to one of these trucks. All right, so let me get up under there. Let's get up under there. I'm going to show you the proper way of setting this up and jacking it up. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, let's check it out. Now, what you want to do is make sure you, like, here's the U-bolts uh, right here. These are the U-bolts going around the axle holding in the uh, leaf springs. And you want to try to get it right up under there, right up under this bracket right here. So, we're going to take our 2x6, set it right there. Also, guys, try to get this vehicle on level ground as possible. All right, we got it right there. Now, on these jacks, once you set the jack in, if you got a lot of space in there, what you want to do is take this. This top of it will turn out so that can meet up to where you need to so you don't have to do too much jacking. But let's see here. All right, we're going to set this in there. Oh, yeah, we can go up more. So... Bring this all the way up. Okay, you want to make sure that thing is centered right. Now there's a hole, a little slot right here. So I'm going to make sure I'm not on that. I want to make sure I'm on the solid part. Okay, let's bring that down. Get our handle. First, this part right here, you gotta turn clockwise to lock it. And you wanna make sure, guys, make sure you turn that thing tight because if not, this jack will slowly come down. So you wanna make that tight. Then, you wanna go ahead. Start jacking this up. And what you want to do is jack this up till the tires just come off the ground. About, about a half an inch, max an inch. Because these things are heavy to take off. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got it off the ground. An inch max. Because taking these tires off is kind of heavy. And I'm going to tell you about why we got to take the tires off instead of a lot of... I'll tell you in a minute. The next thing we're going to do, guys, as you always know what I say, is jack stands. You cannot, you cannot use... The little jack stands. You definitely have to get something heavy duty <laughs> to hold this thing up and leave. You're going to leave our hydraulic jack there, right there. But you just definitely can't trust a jack by itself. So what we're going to do now, we can put it under two points. One, where the leaf spring is, or two, where the chassis is. Either one, it's going to be okay. But you got to remember that base cannot be particle board, it can't be dirt. It's got to be plywood, not even brick. And I like these jack stands because it doesn't have the lever to latches. This is an actual pin that's going through this. So I like these a lot better.
All right. Lock this pin, cotter pin back into place. Great. And I'm gonna leave that right there. Now let's get out of here and uh, take these tires off. Be right back. All right, guys, there's two ways of doing this. One is, uh, I'm gonna tell you the, the easy way. <laughs> if you can get you, there's a, a dolly that has four wheels on it and rollers right here and a little bottle jack at the end of it. And what happens is these rollers will go under both tires. You jack it up, take the weight off of it. And instead of taking off the tires, what you would do is take out the axle. We gotta take the axle out anyway, but take out the axle and then the whole thing will take off the tires and the drum at the same time. Just, it'll just walk the whole thing out. That's the, that's the other, that's the one way of doing it. But here's the other way. Both ways are good. There's no, none, neither one is safer above the other one. All right, so we're gonna be doing it this way. We first, we gotta take off the tires and it's got two, four, six, eight, 30 millimeter lug nuts. Um, hey, we gotta get one, let's miss one over here. So we got a 30 millimeter, half inch drive socket. We're gonna be using our Earthquake, half inch drive. And these things, guys, are tight. <laughs> so but you know earthquake don't play so let's get all these off and we'll be right back all right guys we got all the lugs out and guys just in case if i didn't mention this no actually i don't think i did now these are 30 millimeter but if you don't have a 30 millimeter these are one and three sixteenths see it's it's easier just to say 30 millimeter <laughs> lug nuts all right, the next thing we're gonna do is get a tire. If you're, uh, if you don't, have, if you feel that like you don't have a lot of strength, you definitely want to get two people when doing this. These tires are kind of heavy. Uh, another little trick is to use a pry bar, and you're definitely gonna need a pry bar or something to put these back on. So what we're gonna do is dang it. That's what happens when you paint the, paint the things. This sucks. It's gonna be kind of difficult to do with it. We can pick it up in dirt. See how easy it was with the pry bar. You just wiggle, put the pry bar up under it and wiggle it and get that off. Okay, don't try to manhandle these and pick them up. Just slide them from under the truck and let the thing roll out. Set it down. Let's get our next one. Again, I can't stress this enough. You make sure you got that hydraulic jack stayed up under there and a jack stand because now there's nothing holding this side of the truck up except those two. Ah, look at that. And actually guys, we might not even have to it, it is it is a lot easier if I just take this off and take off the whole the hub the, everything because the drum is right here but it will be easy to do the brakes like that taking that off huh. which way do I want to do it I don't know all right let's set this to the side and we'll be right back 
All right, guys, the next thing we can do is take off our drum, but you cannot take off your drum right now. I was gonna take off the whole axle, and I still might do that, but I'm gonna show you how to take off just the drum, just in case you're changing just the drum. Now, right now, you see this? Right now, our emergency brakes are locked on. There's no way I'm gonna turn this right now. There's no way. So what I gotta do is go back to the brake chamber and release that chamber. Take the pressure off of these brakes. So when we come back, you're gonna be on the other side of the vehicle looking in, look right over here. Here's our brake chamber right there. I know it's kind of dirty looking, but right there. So you're gonna be on the other side looking in and there's a nut on the back that we're gonna have to adjust that nut <coughs> until this whole system, this whole drum right here can turn. All right, we'll be right back. All right guys, here we are in the back. Here's your brake chamber. Now right now, my emergency brakes are on these systems are even if I was to go up there and push my emergency brakes in this will not turn that is definitely a safety it will not work unless the vehicle is running and the power steering there's a power steering fluid up there. there's another a different pump for this it'll come over here and it'll uh, release the system so we have to do this manually and this is what they do when they have to tow your vehicle all right you want to get a 19 millimeter half inch drive socket with a half inch drive ratchet and you're going to have a nut right here in the center. You're going to loosen that. Sometimes it's tight. Okay. And you're going to loosen it. And you're going to bring it out by your hand <coughs> till it stops. No, you're still not going to be able to turn it. Now you're going to start feeling some pressure on it. So you're going to start, keep on loosening. And you're going to get to a point where you can turn it now. Now it's loose. And we're just going to go ahead a little bit more. Okay. We are good to go. All right. When we come back, we're going to be on the other side and see if we can get this drum off. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, guys, one, one thing I did um, forget to tell you is that what we did was took both tires, stacked them up on top of each other, and set it up under the vehicle just in case. That's another added security. Definitely want to do that. Now, this right here can be a complicated process right here. One, uh, you might have to go in the back and readjust adjust the brakes to come back off, but more than likely you don't have to. Um, Another thing is we're going to try to get this drum off of this whole hub assembly right here without taking this off Which might be kind of difficult sometimes. So what you want to do is take you a little pry bar And you got your backing plate and your drum. What you want to try to go between there <laughs> Yeah, sometimes guys this, that just don't work that just don't work. Now, another thing we can do here, because this thing's getting locked up here, uh, we can take a, a hammer and try to knock it loose. Make sure, yeah, we are turning because it does come out. So, you know what? Let's, uh, before we get crazy and have to pull this out, let's try a hammer. We'll be right back. Guys, okay, uh, when you're going to hit this, better get you a hammer. <laughs> Don't get no, don't come over here with no carpenter's hammer on this one. You can do that a lot of job, but not this one. And what you want to do is just hit the side of it. Try to get all that. Get all that rust and all. Broke loose. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but let me see if I can turn it. No, I can't turn it. 
I can see where I'm starting to break loose around there. And if I can start getting in between here. Get this and just pull that whole axle out of there. Yeah, I'm definitely in there. See, what I'm going to have to do now is look back here and I'm going to might have to adjust those brakes in how am i going to show you this i must be this thing got a lip on it i want to be doing this okay all right guys let me get an adjusting spoon and uh ah, that's going to be kind of difficult because this thing is meant to lock into place I'm gonna try it anyway. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, you know what? Forget that. What we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and pull the hub off. We're gonna get you a drain pan or something because the air's gear oil is gonna come out of here. Now you got the, all these 19 millimeter uh, nuts here, so I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter deep half inch drive. And ah, go ahead and take. Dang it! With this paint on it, and it's gonna. Hard time with this mess. Let's take all these out, and you're gonna have these cups, these little cones in there. Well, first the lock wash, they're gonna be cones in there. Those things are stuck in there. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get those out once we take all the nuts off with the lock washers. All right, so let's get all those off, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got them all off, and we got the lock wash stuff. Now, these little cones in there, these little cones are split. So they meant to go in there and stick and stay. Now, here's a little trick of getting those out. You wanna take your, your big hammer, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna, this center part right here, you can't hurt it. You're gonna whack it. You're gonna whack this hard enough that those cones are gonna start walking out. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it, let me, uh, let's switch sides. I and be careful of hitting those, uh, and if you want, put the lugs back up there, the nuts back up there so you don't hit it. I just, I just heard it come loose. Yeah, they came loose. And we're gonna just get us a pair of pliers or something. Yeah, all that grease and stuff up there stopping them from actually coming all the way out. But as you can see, that's how they come out, just like that. And you can see the oil. Gear oil starting to come out of there. And there we go. I'm going to hit this a little more times. Actually, they are all, all loose already. Coming out of there. So I ain't got to hit it no more. So I'll go ahead and walk around. And so you might have to get a pair of pliers or something and turn it and take them off. Matter of fact, let me go get a pair of pliers and show you what I mean. Be right back. All right, got a pair of pliers. Go in there and take them off easy like that. All right, let's get all those out and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got all of them out. Now your axle is ready to come out. Just gonna have a gasket right there. And you wanna definitely, don't set this in the dirt. You wanna set it on a piece of cardboard and there we go just like that and that's all the thing is set in there and it puts in some spines um aligning some spines all right let's go set this down this is a nice look at that axle yeah buddy that's the f700 all right we'll be right back now guys you're gonna have a big nut right in there now you can either go to the store and try to get you a 50 dollars socket or something like that to take that off <laughs> Or you could do it like this way and this way. And actually, check this out. There's a mark up there. This is, this is how true mechanics do this too. <laughs> you want to take you a chisel 
you want to get right to the corner, right on one of those flat ends corners, get your small hammer, and you will actually be able to Take that off and take this first nut off. So let's take that off and we'll be right back. Alright guys, got that off, set that down to the side. Now inside there, there's going to be a ring. Yeah, that ring is kind of difficult to come off of there. Sometimes you might have to get like a... Ah, here we come. With the ring with a bunch of holes in it. Okay, we got that, and it's got a little lip right there that lines up with that slot right there. So we're gonna put that off. And next, we have another nut in there, and this one has a little pin sticking out of it. That's the line up with that ring, one of those circles on that ring right there, and that one. They will just come right out. So let's get this one out and we'll be right back. Alright guys. So we got that one out and see that's the pin I was telling you on the sticking up. So we this one tightens up against there in the bearing. Then this one will go on with that right there to lock it into place. And then this one goes on to stop that from spinning. So that's good. Next thing we're going to do, we got our bearing inside there. And actually, actually, you know what we're going to try to do, guys? Let me try to, you know what, let me go, let me change my gloves and get some different gloves on. Be right back. Alright guys, next thing we're going to do is take out that bearing, that big bearing back there. And what you want to do, a nice easy way of doing that is get you some needle nose pliers. Or just, yeah, needle nose. Just go in there, grab onto the lip of it, and you should be able to just walk that bearing. No, that's, that's a wheel bearing. Yeah, buddy, you know that don't play. <laughs> All right, let's set this to the side. And we might get a new bearing because it looks like it's, no, it's, I thought it was getting kind of burnt, but it's not. If you see any discoloration, like brownness, like you see how it, like, like that, Mm -hmm. Replace the bearing, but that's not bearing because the bearings are burning, but that's not because of that. That's just the oil. So you just wipe it off. It's clean. But these are good. All right, let's set this to the side. And look, guys, let me go put this to the side somewhere out of the way, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got the bearing out. Now it should. It just looks like it's tilting. Dang it! Ah, oh, man, I know some brakes are holding, holding up back there on this thing. This thing is so. Oh, oh. Dang, working. I'm just. All right. This sucks. <laughs> okay, what are we gonna do here? Alright, I got an idea. It's gonna be kind of unorthodox, but we need something to pull this. So what if I hook a chain up to it, get the little tractor, and just pull a little tension to pull it? Hey, I don't care. Let's try it. Alright guys, we'll be right back. Alright guys, here we go. This is my little setup right here. I took the chain, put it around two of the bolt studs right here with the bolts in it hook the chain up to this and I'm gonna pull forward and <laughs> the, and what also what I did I lowered the truck down just so it touches that jack stand so get it added security don't pull the truck off everything that would suck but anyway I think uh, I think we're gonna be good let's try it
All right, guys. I am now in DEFCON 3. I ain't hitting 5 yet. So, now that I got the bearing... Huh? What were you saying? Okay. <laughs> now that I got it off, I am going to still try to get a pry bar in between the drum and the hub. Try something. I'm going to end up... I'll break this whole drum in half. One side come up, the other side come up. I don't know what the heck going on. I got a nice opening right there. Give me some ideas, Simi. Mm. That's not a, that is not an idea. We could um, end the uh, episode right now and see if anybody has an idea. Heck yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> I saw it moving. It's, it's Jim. Oh, that's stuck in there. <laughs> now, if I can, uh, if I can get that other side, the problem is I can't get it. I thought we had it. I thought it was gonna come up. That drum is stuck up there. I don't know brakes. Now I wish I was the Hulk. Maybe you need to get angry. I ain't that much angry in the world. It did back off some. I don't know if you can see between there. If it gets a, if it gets back there enough where I can get a pry bar back with this uh this drum is, I'll be good to go. I don't even if it pulls the brake pads off, I don't really personally care.
shoes are probably the cheapest thing on this. It did back off. You can see it in the back. So huh. There's a bigger gap in the back. I don't know if I can so it did back off. If I can continue that. The eyeball is too big to go in here though. Oh heck yeah, look at that. If I can get this pry bar in there. You know I ain't, I ain't really trusting these Milwaukee pry bars. If Don't do you anything. have others? Yeah, but. Is it still? Yeah. There's still a little gimp back there. All right, guys, I'm going to keep on trying to hit it, try to get this thing past the brake, even break the brake shoes off of the springs. I really don't care right now. But one way or another, we got to get this off. So we're going to keep on trying this. We'll be right back. Okay. All right, guys, I got the pry bar, the big pry bar, stuck in the back. But now I'm really off center. Now what I'm going to try to do here is try to... If I can get this other side in there, that'll be great. This truck is... walk around. Man, it looks messed up in here. I got the worstest. Why couldn't this... No, if it was a customer's vehicle, I'd be so upset right now. Okay, let's see now. That side's pulled out. I need this side to come out. So. right back again all right guys on this side I got a pry bar stuck to it can you see that problem here and up here I got this pry bar stuck into there and we're gonna try here
the heck is that? Oh, the fly boy. Bogus mess, man. Yes, what the hell is messing us? It's awfully gooey up in there. <sighs> what is that supposed to be? Part of the adjuster. You know what? Let's get this thing off of here. There ain't enough brake cleaner in the world for that. Oh, Whoops. Oh, that sucked. Dang it. Oh, man, this sucks. Man. All right, let's get this out of the way. Let's drag these brake shoes out of here. Hey. What, the, what is that? The coating that goes on this. <laughs> you know, this is a uh, bogus. Look at this mess in here. See, I couldn't even get those adjusters there. It was all, it wouldn't have worked anymore. It was all messed up. Man. All right. So, hey, the brake brake shoes are still like brand new. Too bad the brakes wasn't working. But we definitely can't reuse those. We gotta get new brake shoes. Um, you know, I'm not gonna take a ch I'm not gonna take a chance, guys. I was gonna rebuild these things, but. We build what? I don't see nothing. It's too much wheel, gunk. Uh, you got a wheel cylinder right here and a wheel cylinder right here. And probably this is the one that was leaking. That thing, the teeth on that is broken. <laughs> you got a close up on that? See the teeth right there? It's kind of hard to tell because they're so shiny. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what. Guys, we're going to clean this up. We're going to bring the power washer over here. We're going to wash this mess up. But we definitely have to do that anyway. So no, let's. I uh, think I can see. We're going to clean up anyway. Okay. All right, we'll be right back.
right, guys, check it out. Wow, it now we can see what's what. Heck yeah, look at this. This is the wheel, this is the adjusting wheel. This is supposed to be points on that too. So that thing is all, <coughs> all messed up. I'm not even gonna take a chance. I was gonna rebuild this, but no, I'm not. We're just gonna replace that all together. This one's for the emergency, for the locking brakes and all brakes. Emergency brakes, you wanna call it, parking brakes. This one looks good. This one's not leaking at all. So we're good with that one. But I'm definitely changing that. We're gonna get a new seal. Now let's walk over here and uh, look at our drum. You guys, these drums. This is a drum. That little drum, y'all talk about these cars. There ain't no drum. That's a fruit bowl compared to this. Look at this. This is a drum. Look at it. Look at that drum. That's a drum. <laughs> okay, it's got a it's got a little lip in it, but it these brakes the brakes definitely wasn't what was holding that. The adjustment. It was definitely that stuff just tore off, just messed up inside there. It's got a little lip. Let me get a price on some drums. It might just replace the drums as well. But the lip is not that bad at all. Uh, the, uh, the shipping on these things will kill us though. These things are like a uh, 90 pounds. But um, there you go. We're going next time. Take that uh, Wilson off. Get a new one and all. That's where Civi comes in. Cute Civi comes in. That's what she gonna order. Hard. <laughs> right, Civi? Yes. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll be right back. All right. So this is the end of part one on this 1993 Ford F700, where we're going to be replacing. The uh, rear is actually considered the rear forward wheel cylinder. Uh, you got the rear forward and the rear rear wheel. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, get a new wheel cylinder. So make sure you just stay tuned for part two where you see us replace that wheel cylinder. Alright, but in the meantime, if you guys have any comments or questions, you can post us below in the comment section. Or you can email to me at tim at astroautorepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. Or watch it again. This is Sylvia from <laughs> Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.